Good morning from Rio. Today is our last full day in Rio de Janeiro and today we are going to visit the most popular tourist attraction in Rio de Janeiro. And this place is Statue of Christ. It's also one of the most popular tourist attractions in Brazil. Uh, there are several ways how you can get to the statue. It's uh, high on the mountain. You can take a train. It's the most popular way to get there. You can also take a bus or a car to go there by road. You can go on a helicopter ride to see the place from the sky. And you can also do like we are planning to do. You can hike to the statue of Christ. Let's go and find the hiking trail to the statue. It's supposed to be around a two hour hike to the top. And we are starting in this beautiful park with all these old colonial buildings. And Una is already ahead of us. Beautiful colonial style buildings. And here we can see the statue on the mountain. Uh, see, jackfruit. This is jackfruit. This one is maybe, I don't know, five, six kilos. Just a moment ago, there was the trailhead. And there you have to leave your contact details, your name, surname, phone number, and how many people are there going with you. This is the only trail where we have been so far where you have to do this, because at least in the past it was considered a possibly dangerous hike due to possible muggings. A tiny waterfall here. So, yeah, for most part, again, quite okay. In some parts, a little bit. Not so much. Yeah, not so much. In some parts, not so much. It looks like just this tree fell and and that's it do you see a trail yeah oh, yeah i see a trail as well more than half is already behind us i think i hear people I think the top is somewhere near. I think the hardest part is a, is somewhere near uh, the hardest part, which is also no. super steep. No. Una's favorite part. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yeah, the hardest part is uh, close to the end. So and we are close to the end then. I yeah, we, we should be. Uh, yeah, and it's like. 300 meters of very steep hiking. Not the easy walk in the park we have right now. Actually, nothing is an easy walk in the park in Brazil. Even a walk in the park because of the heat, of this, of this tropical heat and humidity. You see, this is the trail where we came from there. That means that by accident we found some shortcut. Do we see the statue? Not yet. But I see some mountain top. Yay! We found it. The steep part. But it's not that bad. It's bad if it's raining or if it's been raining recently. Then I absolutely wouldn't recommend to come any close to this place because you will just slide down the mountain together with mud some serious steps here it's been exactly one hour since we entered the park and we are almost on the ground <coughs> almost at the top the real steep part 
and this I guess is where the the train goes by the way this train this uh, train which now goes uh, to the statue of Christ is the oldest tourist attraction in Brazil it's approximately 100 years old so we go across these so we go across these tracks and we go on the trail again the last stretch maybe this is the Kopnik they are all talking about it has ears like that of a devil and he looks suspicious he's kind of not paying attention to us just relaxing i'm just chilling here on the tree don't pay it's attention to me close. one time one such a gopnik took my glasses in bali and uh, then i could get them back but another time another gopnik took my glasses and uh, broke them in half so yeah so i better be careful of them you never know and just in case you have come this far and don't want to go any further you don't want to go this last two minutes that's it you are tired there's a bench you can sit down and enjoy the view of Rio look at that monstrous bridge It goes from Rio to a city called Niteroi. Yesterday we went there on a short uh, half day trip. Uh, we took a taxi so we could get there faster and yeah, it's a nice place to go to. It seems and feels like a quieter version of Rio. Okay, we are not that tired. We'll go and we'll do that final stretch of one, two minutes of walking. We are strong we can do it or do you think we need to call taxi so this is where the statue is and if you are too tired here is the phone where you call the taxi to do the final 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 stretch how much was it uh, 23 something 23 that's uh, a little bit Less than five euro per person. <laughs> Look, Luna, how many people were faster than us hiking. And here it is. I'm so happy that we walked, not go on a crowded train. And we are walking back, back to where we started this hike. Uh, so how was it? Uh, the statue. Statue is okay. Uh, the view. The view is amazing and if you like, would like to have a beautiful view of Rio de Janeiro, this is one of the best places to go to. Uh, yeah, but if you like to do things your own way like, like we do, if you like hiking and if you are not afraid of getting sweaty, do the hike. It's beautiful, it's worth it. I think it's much better than uh, going on a packed train. And as we walk down this hike, let's talk a little bit about safety in Rio de Janeiro. It's interesting to see that uh, now there are more people. When we walked up, we saw only four other people and now we passed maybe 10 people already in the first meters, in the first minutes. Okay, so safety in Rio de Janeiro. Um, we have been to quite a few countries, maybe 40, 45, uh, and Rio de Janeiro and Brazil in general is the first 
place where before coming here we heard so many like uh, bad things people were warning us about Rio de Janeiro they asked us are you sure are you really want to go to Rio de Janeiro because Rio de Janeiro is a dangerous city and if you look on the internet you see quite a lot of uh, these kind of articles videos about this topic and at the same time you see quite a lot of reassuring articles and videos saying that it's fine and this is exactly how we have been feeling here like but it's fine that's in short but i also want to go a little bit more into details and while well, not falling off tell you about some things that we were expecting what we had heard a lot about rio and how it's in reality so the safety first thing first no snakes uh, first thing uh, walking around in rio we thought from what we had heard and seen we thought that it's gonna be like almost impossible to walk around that it will be like extremely dangerous to walk around in rio but um yeah and that people won't be walking around but in reality a lot of people are walking around and uh, it's completely fine to walk around yes there are areas you should avoid avoid but it's not the whole city like that you should avoid and it's not like we thought that it will be safe only to walk like along the beach and that's it but in reality like it's fine so walking around is fine another thing about getting around we thought okay look it's dangerous to walk around we'll be taking taxis taxi most likely is the only like option to get around in reality there are okay buses okay metro and you can go cycling in rio so and people do it people use this modes of transportation it's not like everyone is using only a taxi like walking out of their apartment building or hotel getting on the taxi and just going to the next place they use public transportation it's fine maybe not tourists actually i don't know but yeah but we used buses and metro and they're okay they're good so yeah so taxi is not the only option Let's get over this part and then we'll continue. Uh, okay, so people walk around, people use public transportation. Maybe not in the evening. For Maybe not the evening, yeah. Like, you are a bit more careful. Okay, third thing. We thought that no one will be using their phones on the street. It's not, it's not true. Uh, people like in every other country, they use mobile phone on the streets, at least in Rio de Janeiro. And definitely in places like Paraty. In fact, it's the only place, city, I have seen people carrying their phones so visibly. You, you, you always see like, what phone, which person has because they they put it like this like in their pants in swim pants swing pants it's the only place i have seen people carrying mobile phones like this iphones in the waistband yeah, in the waistband, yeah, yeah. you still see iphones you see apple watches you see expensive smartphone samsung smartphones like like in other places so number three people use their mobile phones here they use them on the streets as well that's how we see it so that's number three what else number four again about walking the streets we thought that everyone will be carrying their backpacks if they have one in front or we won't see like women's handbags we see them and people wear their backpacks on the back like maybe 5% of people wear them in the front, but most wear it like I do. Maybe again, maybe they are 
more extra like careful and conscious about their place where they are about the environment but like from from my perspective it looks like it like the life is happening like in any other place yeah so that, that that's how we see safety situation in rio de janeiro it's it seems completely fine we yeah, have been walking tourists. sorry for a regular tourist yeah for a regular tourist uh, it seems completely fine who is careful yeah for regular tourists who is careful we have been walking to different places we have been going on hikes going on um, to a lot of places on our own without guides without group tours and we have felt absolutely fine of course it also depends from you from what you are used to if you are coming from a place where there are no homeless people if there are no beggars on the streets if uh, i don't know you come from a small town or small uh, country even like like latvia in fact uh, where where you are not used to multicultural environment seeing people from different countries different races then you might feel uncomfortable just because you are like in a different environment in a multicultural environment like you have in Rio de Janeiro and even more when you see all the homeless people on the streets in Rio there are a lot of homeless people in Rio de Janeiro a lot of them are in more upper scale areas like more tour tourist areas like Copacabana, Ipanema, Leblon in these areas you see homeless people and people begging um, on the streets a lot that might make you feel unsafe uncomfortable like uh, if you are not used to that in your country city at the same time for us uh, it's a normal it's, it's a normal thing and uh, it doesn't scare us and it shouldn't scare you because you see um, why, why it's happening in uh, Rio de Janeiro and in Brazil in general in Brazil there is a huge inequality there are huge groups of people who earn similar like in Western Europe and there is also a huge group of people who live on like less than a euro a day and uh, yeah that creates the situation you see here in Rio de Janeiro in particular and um, yeah but as I said like you shouldn't be really afraid of that only because you see poor people on the streets uh, sleeping begging for money or uh, selling some things you shouldn't be afraid of them because like same like in your country same like you if you i don't know if your salary is coming late you won't be going robbing the store same like people here they don't turn to crime so easily it's just not human's nature to turn to crime so easily well yeah that's what i wanted to tell you don't be afraid be careful don't be afraid and uh, go to rio visit this beautiful city go to brazil i think the biggest tip i can uh, give you the best tip i can give you is what we have heard from uh, quite a few locals just do a little bit of research before you go to some places if if an area or neighborhood looks sketchy for you maybe don't go there like uh, turn around go back take a taxi like uh, don't do stupid things and uh, you'll be fine that's why also now we are not taking the road down the mountain because we just don't know where exactly it goes through what kind of areas so we are hiking because we know that the hike is fine i just remembered the only kind of sketchy situation we have been to it was the very first day in rio de janeiro we are uh, we are we were arriving by taxi from the airport and uh, like maybe two three minutes ride away from our hostel the taxi driver stopped turned around and said this area is a little bit dangerous these were his words he said in portuguese but we understood that and um, he said i'm not going there it's a favela uh we said to him 
here's the phone number call to the uh, reception of our hostel and ask because we think it's a normal area you can go there and uh, he didn't call to the hostel he asked a policeman on the street the policeman said that it's fine and he took us to the hostel this was the only situation when we thought like maybe we are in danger because uh, after this conversation of course you are like looking around and thinking like, oh yeah this uh, neighborhood looks strange it's so dark and there are so few people walking around and these people they look kind of not so i don't know elegant like uh, on other streets we were passing by but yeah but we spent in that neighborhood in the favela babylonia favela uh, 10 days we were walking the same road at least twice or four times a day and felt absolutely normal and one more thing about inequality in brazil um, when i say it's bad it's really bad here uh, for example if you compare it to thailand or even to india i think it's in india they are even w better at it even yeah even in india it's better and uh, how this um, like um, here here the difference that gap is so big that um, yeah as i said there are people living on western europe salaries and you can see that in the shops and the restaurants prices are like in europe at the same time there are people living on like one euro a day and of course they can't really survive it's like it's like for a caveman being transported to 21st century like it, it's it must be like extremely hard but in uh, in many countries in Asia where there is also like poverty is a quite a bit big problem but uh, the inequality there isn't that big and that means that like if you are poor and your neighbor is poor like maybe you are a taxi driver you offer cheap taxi services to your neighbor your neighbor has a restaurant he or she cooks a cheap food so you are fed your neighbor has a taxi service both of you are happy you may be might be poor but you don't feel that big inequality which is a reality unfortunately in brazil and brazil is one of the worst countries in the world at this and speaking of the view from the statue uh, it's yeah it's, it's very beautiful it's it's amazing view of rio de janeiro we have been several places uh, several viewpoints high viewpoints of rio de janeiro and i must say that all of them are special in their own way for example this one from the statue of christ it offers you a little bit different angle and uh, yeah so definitely if you can go to several viewpoints in rio de janeiro for example go to two brothers mountain it offers you a view of um, what was the name? Ipanema. Uh, and I forgot the name. That Pedra, that high, high rock, that Pedra, what? Pedra. Gavea. Sorry? Gavea. Pedra Gavia. Yeah, Pedra Gavia. Uh, the mountain behind Two Brothers Mountain. It offers you a wider view of uh, like the same kind of area, the same, the same part of Rio de Janeiro. So yeah, so go and check out several places. Uh, they are beautiful. And one of the best views, which is also very easy to get to, the viewpoint, is in, uh, like, right behind the Babylonia favela, where we went on our first video. Check out that one if you want an easy and beautiful hike. And beautiful view of Rio de Janeiro but my legs are ah, killing me yesterday I did one short hike I thought like yeah it's short I thought it's gonna be an easy short hike before lunch turned out that it's like twice as long as I thought steep wild so today my legs are in not the best condition oh. I didn't film that trail it's uh, like one hour walk from 
Copacabana from the beach to the top of the mountain if you're going fast like I did yesterday but uh, yeah the, the hikes that we don't show in the videos you will find them at some point on our blog makeadventurehappen.com check it out if you haven't yet we post all the hikes there but right now we have maybe like half a year delay marmoset uh -oh. or monkey a monkey black monkey yeah uh -huh. very black monkey cute black monkey we are approaching the trailhead and uh, it looks like if you want to do this hike when there are other people so you feel i don't know more safe do it during the day because now now it's around what one o'clock 1 p.m uh, we have seen quite a lot of people maybe 30 people well in the morning we saw only four okay uh, we are going down to the park taking a taxi going back to our apartment going to the post office because we want to send postcards then going for one last swim to our favorite part of Ipanema beach and tomorrow we are going to another city so that will be it for Rio de Janeiro Rio de Janeiro was Rio de Janeiro is an awesome city we really love this city we definitely want to come back to Rio de Janeiro it's one of our top five favorite cities now we have done more or less everything that we wanted to do we wanted to uh, spend some weeks living in Rio de Janeiro near the beach going uh, frequently for a swim going for walks going for hikes and yeah and we did way more than we were planning to do because it turned out that Rio de Janeiro is much safer okay that's it for Rio de Janeiro that's it for this video see you soon most likely from the biggest city in Latin America